We are machinists, we are mechanics, and we are makers. And sometimes we get boo-boos. <laughs> My first week as a machine operator in a job shop, I seemed to cut myself on everything that I picked up. I was just terrible. And the band-aids that I used really limited my motion. I could no longer load parts easily. I couldn't bend my knuckles. And I certainly couldn't type at a keyboard. Now there is a real art to protecting our hands. And uh, I can't believe that I'm making a video on how to put on a band-aid. But there's some really interesting stuff here. Stuff that everybody should know. We should be sharing this video with our friends. So stick around because we're going to show you all of our tricks and this Haas tip of the day. Everything for me begins with my setup sheet. So check this out. I've got a block loaded up. Now if you're tightening up those tools by hand. If you have just cut yourself and are asking the question, hey, I wonder if I should go in and get this looked at by a professional? The answer is yes. Go in. I am not a doctor. I am a machinist. And we've got some amazing things to show you. But if blood is spurting, if the cut is really deep, if you can see fat, muscle, or bone, if, if the cut is near your eye, if you've been bitten by a coworker uh, or an animal, let's say a, a pet tiger, uh, if you cannot get the bleeding to stop and it's been like 15 minutes, these are all really good reasons to go in and see a medical professional. Now beyond that, if you've gotten a small cut, the first thing we wanna do is stop the bleeding. So grab yourself a clean cloth, a rag, some gauze, and apply that to the wound, put pressure on it for a few minutes until the bleeding stops. Next, we've just got to clean off the wound. Now this sounds pretty simple, but they've kind of changed all the rules on us. Years ago, our mom would apply hydrogen peroxide or betadine, or maybe rubbing alcohol to the wound as an antiseptic. But all of the agencies today are saying that this is not really the best thing to do. These antiseptics kill germs, but they're also really harsh on your skin. And if we use them, it's going to take longer for that cut to heal. Now, we'll link to the CDC website and others in the description that talk more about this. But if we're not gonna use these guys to clean out our cut, what should we do? Well, soap and water. We'll wanna wash out that wound under, under clean water for at least five minutes. This is not a, a typical 20 second hand wash. We're talking about five minutes underneath clean water. Now, does it matter what kind of soap we use? All the agencies say not really. Uh, it doesn't have to be an antibacterial soap. They're not too concerned whether it's a liquid soap or bar soap. It just matters that we're flushing it all out, that we are cleaning it with mild soap and water in that time, five plus minutes. If there is debris in the wound and you just can't get it out, you've got to go get it looked at. Otherwise, it's, it's just going to get infected. And if you don't have any running water, by all means, uh, use some hydrogen peroxide or some povidone iodine mixture or some rubbing alcohol to disinfect that wound. And while we're talking about rubbing alcohol, uh, I've got two different bottles here. One I got from the medicine cabinet here at work, and one I got from the medicine cabinet at my house. And the one I had at my house is, is not good enough for cleaning out wounds. It has 50% concentration of isopropyl alcohol, and the one we have here at the factory is 70%. They tell us that 50% concentration of isopropyl is not strong enough to disinfect properly. You need at least 70% or stronger. So we've stopped the bleeding, we've washed up the wound, now what? Some of us might say that leaving the wound open to let it dry out is the best thing, but the results are in. And the experts tell us that keeping the wound moist and protected is gonna make it heal faster and it's gonna give us less scarring and less chance of infection. Before we put on a bandage, we'll wanna apply some antibiotic ointment like Neosporin. And if you're having someone else apply this for you, they can wash their hands, wear some gloves, or use a cotton swab to apply the ointment. Now, this is really good stuff. It's gonna keep the wound from getting infected, and it's also gonna keep the bandage from sticking. 
Okay, now it's time for the cool part, where we get to show you all the different kinds of bandages and how we can custom make our own. If you have a nice first aid kit like we do at my work, you'll have an assortment of bandages. Now, if I've cut my fingertip, we'll grab a finger bandage and apply it like this. If all we have are regular strip bandages, that's totally fine. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a pair of scissors and clean them with 70% rubbing alcohol, and then we're gonna cut some deep V notches into the side of the Band-Aid and apply it in the same way we did a minute ago. Now, I really like this method because you can keep the Band-Aid really narrow, which makes it perfect for typing on a computer keyboard. Now for these fingertip cuts, I'll often use a finger protector, a cot. Now these look really silly, but they do a fantastic job of keeping that fingertip bandage clean and dry. And for some reason, uh, they're just amazing at helping me to pick up little objects or to type if I've got a bandage on. For any cuts in between the joints on the flat spot of your finger, a finger wrap works really well. They have a long adhesive end that holds really well. Now for any other joint or knuckle on our hands, we can grab ourselves a knuckle bandage. Now these can be used just about anywhere on the hand uh, without limiting motion. Now these are perfect for a machinist who still has work to do. And if you don't have any knuckle bandages around, again, just grab yourself some regular strip band-aids. We can cut right down the middle of each end so it'll straddle the joint, but still allow us to bend those fingers. Now to protect this kind of bandage from grime and from coolant, we can just wrap the entire hand in a rubber glove. Nitrile or latex gloves are just perfect for this. And I'll often use these kind of uh, mechanics gloves if I'm handling material in and out of the machine. Now, if I've really gotten myself somewhere on my fingers and I need some extra protection, I'm gonna grab some tubular gauze. Uh, one brand name is Surgitude. Now, this is the coolest thing in my kit. The tubular gauze kits typically come with an applicator that looks like a splint. Now, we'll cut a section of the gauze a little more than twice the length of the finger. We'll slide the gauze over the applicator, put that over the finger. Slide the gauze onto the finger, and then while holding the gauze in place, we'll pull the applicator out and away from the finger by about a half inch, 13 millimeters. Here, we'll give the tube one full twist, and then slide the applicator back over the finger a second time. Now, this is a really effective way to protect a hurt finger. We are looking really good, but just like everything else in a shop, things always come down to good maintenance. If the bandage gets wet from machine coolant or dirty in some other way, it's time to change it. Now aside from that, changing the bandage once a day is a good idea. You'll clean it, you'll put on some antibiotic ointment, it will be the quickest way to get you healed up. I also have some thermometers here. I've got some of the ones that I'll use at home, and then I also have these Thermodot disposable thermometers that I keep in all of my med kits. So if you wake up the next morning, take your temperature, and it's above 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, you've got a fever and you probably have an infection. If that cut is now all red, swollen, uh, hot to the touch or oozing, you probably have an infection and you need to go get it looked at. Now the best medicine is preventative. We have the tools here to stop cuts from happening in the first place. Over here, we have a, a really nice set of cut resistant gloves. Now these are a little bit pricey, maybe 10 US dollars, but they are totally worth it. If I'm moving a lot of raw stock around, sharp stock, or even handling a lot of tooling, I am wearing these gloves. And even the blue nitrile gloves uh, can help quite a bit to not only protect a wounded hand, but to prevent a wound in the first place. And of course, like always, uh, deburr your parts. Uh, you'll file those sharp edges or they will come back to get you. And if you're a lathe guy, you learned your first week on the job to never, ever, ever grab those stringy chips. 
Never. I don't even care if you're wearing the cut resistant gloves. Don't grab stringy chips. If you gotta move those chips, use a coat hanger or a pair of pliers or something to get them out of the way. Now I do have some other stuff on the table here that I might carry in my medical kit. Like these uh, splinter outs, they're just sterilized disposable needles for getting out splinters. Uh, of course I'll carry tweezers, uh, that's a good thing. And I'll usually have some butterfly bandages. But again, if you've got to cut deep enough that it needs a butterfly, just go to the ER room, don't mess around. But if you've got a small cut, all you need to do is uh, find a cloth, stop the bleeding, clean that sucker out really good with some soap and water, put on some antibiotic ointment, and then cover it with a bandage. And you can cut that bandage for any style of fingertip or knuckle bandage that you'd like if you don't have the, the real stuff. And again, if you're a machinist, you can always cover it with a glove to protect it. If you do that, your wound is gonna heal quickly and it's not gonna slow you down. Well, that is it for this Haas Tip of the Day. Stay safe. Okay, so we told you to keep a wound moist and covered if you want to reduce scarring. But what if you want more scarring, uh, like a Halloween costume? I got to show you this. Every year when it comes to Halloween costumes, I'll use some of this rigid collodion. You can buy it in big bottles or these small packs. And you can take it like fingernail polish and apply it to your skin. And it makes all the skin around the, the, the liquid tighten up as it dries. And it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and it builds up what looks like a very realistic scar. And it's just the perfect accessory to any Halloween costume. Uh, so check that out this next October. That's my, uh, my secret Haas tip of the day this time.